Good morning guys, thank you very much for the birthday wishes. Uh, I wanted to show you that Dan has cleaned the cylinder head on this one. He done a very good job. We are still struggling with that one, uh, removing that crankshaft bolt. Well, I wanted to show you something, so that, like what, what difference the oil change can make. So now let me switch the camera and show you the thing I wanted to show you. So here it is, or here are the oil showers. <coughs> this one the, in a bronze color is from that car. And we, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we assume that had quite regular oil changes. And this is still that dirty with oil sludge is coming. Uh, this shower is coming from this car. So you can see it yourself what a big difference just a simple oil change can make. And now we are going to put both of them into the ultrasonic cleaner alongside with the injectors once I'm finished like uh, preparing them for the ultrasonic cleaning. Okay, so we just realized that we ran out of the hydraulic tappets or lifters for this engine and for all of all of the engines we have here at the moment. They are on the way, but I just haven't received the package yet. So we will need to give this one a little bit of rest. Obviously, we have other things to do. So we are going to do vacuum pump testing on that one, which I'll show you how to do it and what we will be checking and we are going to clean the exhaust pressure sensor pipe on the another Mazda which is outside which I'll show you again how to do it or like explain how to do it and we'll try to bust that nut brake or bolt brake on the on this Mazda which is giving us hard time again um, and maybe we're going to change oil on my BMW. We will see. We just made, or just we just wrote down the things, what we will need, like what we need to stock up, um, and tools and chemicals and so on and so forth. But now let me show you, because the ultrasonic bath is finished with cleaning. So let me show you the results. So here are the injectors cleaned. And this is the oil shower. The other one is still in the cleaner because it needs cleaning a little bit more. Um, then we will put the journals to the ultrasonic cleaner as well and carrying out the the jobs so I just said so vacuum pump testing, trying to break loose that bolt. This one's going to be rest. Oh no, we are going to remove the oil pan while we are waiting for the tappets to arrive. So we're going to remove the oil pan to see the valve cover, uh, sorry, to see the oil strainer. And we're going to bring in that other white Mazda. Let me show you. Um, it's behind the Merc. So we're going to bring that one in. And once that is in, we're going to do the exhaust pressure cleaning and sorry, exhaust pressure sensor pipe cleaning and that can go back to the owner as well. So we are still fighting with the exhaust pressure sensor pipe on this Mazda. The pipe is already clean of like, it's cleaned, the, it has, the air can go through it, but here is the thing. This is the banjo bolt from it and it's supposed to have holes but it doesn't. So then removed it from uh, from its place. It, it goes down there. I can't really show you, but we dropped. I mean, he dropped. I don't want to blame him, obviously. But he dropped the the other washer from here. So we are going to find it first. We have to find it first, and then obviously clean the the bonjo bolt and then put it back with the two washers which will be i guess pain in the s job here is the other bonjo bolt from his engine so it's supposed to have a hole as you can see and this is for this is from this engine so what we tried as well so i tried to start up the car and rev it and then said there is no air coming out of that pipe at all so basically that was completely blocked so 
I, I, I wonder how he didn't have a uh, fault codes for the pressure sensor. But anyway, so now what we need to do, we need to clean the, uh, the bolt and then we'll need to put it back where it belongs, which will be, I guess, a lovely job. But I really hope Dan is skilled enough to, to put it back because he was the one who removed it, not me. So he, he will have to put it back. We are on the next day. As you can see, Daniel is already on that Mazda 3 with that uh, exhaust pressure pipe problem blog. So what he's doing now, he's fighting to get that one job all back in place. I think he mentioned that he just dropped the washer, so he needs to find the washer and uh, obviously put back the bolt. So yeah, wish him good luck. I've been there. So I told him he needs to, he needs to walk in my shoes as well so that's why he, he's the one doing that job because <laughs> I said I'll, I'll, I'll pass on it <laughs> I'm going to assemble that one back together because just the the, the tapets just came so I'm, I'm going to assemble it back together and also I'll need to call the owner because we found out that this trainer looks fairly clean but just I'll ask the owner if he wants to be on the safe side and wants us to replace the trainer but we think it will be okay, but well, anyways, like we want to ask him whether he wants to replace it, just just a peace of mind. Um, and then this one, we are still struggling with it. Uh, vacuum pump probably will be coming today for that. So we are going to fit in it tomorrow and test in it. And there is one outside, which is already done. I've done one test on it, but I want to drive it a little bit longer, maybe 40, 60 miles just to make sure that the fault code doesn't come back on. So without further ado, let us get the jobs done because we've got a lot of things to do. Um, yeah, so once either of us, us succeeds, so either Daniel or me with that one, I'll report you back and let you know like how long it took them to get that bolt back in <laughs> again. So then, managed to put back that bolt, that banjo bolt, um, where it belongs. It, it's there, but you can't really see. And in the meanwhile, I assembled the engine back. Unfortunately, then we'll have to remove that bolt again, because we didn't show it on camera how we cleaned it. No, oh, I'm joking. We can't show it that one because it's already in its place. But we are, we've got another one here, which is a little bit less dirty, but we'll show you how we clean it, like how it will look like once it's cleaned. So then it's finishing up that one. I'm putting back the valve cover on this one. And then I will be going to cleaning the, I'm going to clean the engine block surface from underneath and fit everything back together and very likely we'll start this one up today as well okay so now let me show you that it doesn't hold the vacuum anymore see the needle is not even moving and let me show you that it is actually in that pipe so not just next to it or something yeah so it is tight there and it doesn't hold the vacuum so it is clean now finally thanks to them so i have put back the top of the engine valve cover fuel lines everything then already put back this one so it's ready i'm going to take it for a test drive but what we wanted because the owner said or complained not complained but he told us that it had um, something like a runaway once and then he stopped the car so i thought or i told him we're going to check the turbo if it is leaking bad or not and if you have a look at there um, it is not so the turbo looks okay to us what he told also like uh, where he bought it from the garage i guess he said that they overfilled it i can't remember if he said that the garage told it is fine or not because i've got we've got another customer who is having something similar issue like the garage overfilled the oil it is never good so you can't you shouldn't overfill the oil 
that's why he could have the runaway um, but the turbo looks okay so now i'm just touching up the last bit so putting back it together and um, then we're, then we're going to clean the bottom of the engine surface from the silicone sealant we'll seal it uh, i've been on the call with the owner we just cleaned the strainer because it wasn't that dirty so we agreed on only the cleaning um, and yeah once it's once that's back together we will need to wait at least a day then we can fill it up with oil and then we can test it if it has the oil pressure issues anymore or if it is running any good or any better obviously and then once we are done we're going to let the customer know that he can come and pick the car up so i just came back from the test drive the car drove fine no fault codes whatsoever we've done i've done 40 miles and it managed to average 49 mpg but that was mostly done in the city um i think i'll still take this one home and drive it back home and back here again so just to test it on motorway as well so that the, the fault code is not coming back at all also oil pressure fine um vacuum pump values fine injector correction factors fine what we noticed definitely the car would benefit from a uh, brake bleeding or brake brake fluid replacement and also we noticed like uh, when i lift off my foot from the throttle uh, it has a grinding noise so i don't know if that's the flywheel or the gearbox itself maybe one or the other or both we don't really know uh, mm, i would say maybe the gearbox maybe it would benefit from a gearbox oil change but not 100 percent sure on that one it's like quite a grinding noise never heard uh, that in any of these because this is an automatic so we haven't heard it um, in these mazdas but whatever we are now we are going to do the engine flush so do the fill it up with the flush fluid uh, run it for 15 20 minutes then drain the oil give it a new filter again obviously fresh oil replace the drain plug and i'll drive it home and the car will be good to go so i have done the flush on this one drain the oil now i just need to fill it up with fresh engine oil and still drain the coolant and refill it with the new one because someone put a pink in it um, daniel is st still struggling with the oil pan or like the bottom of the engine removing the sealant so we are going to get that one done today as well i've done vacuum pump testing on that Mazda um, it looks okay so tomorrow I still still want to try it with the new vacuum pump so install it test drive it and see if the code comes back or oh, and also then we will start swapping the parts as you can see um, I've got a brand new intake shutter valve here brand new EGR valve so we are going to swap them and see if it fixes the issue or not um, and tomorrow also we are trying to figure out something with this one to get that bolt undone okay i have filled up the engine with oil and then i'm going to reset the oil data and the oil change interval reset it and then i'm going to start out then i'm going to start up the car and bleed the cooling system then i think already cleaned the bolts for the oil pan for this one so now we are going to fit the oil pan and i think then we are going to call it a day okay so i'm changed now um we finished uh, we've done the oil change of that one the coolant bleeding oil pan is on on this one it's still dry getting dry and i'm going to home with the other mazda which is outside just to test it um, and yeah so basically that was it for today tomorrow we are going to be testing the cars more likely and obviously test uh, checking um, if we can solve the issue with the po 101 on that black mazda but yeah um, that that will be in the tomorrow's video anyways thank you very much for watching and see you soon in the very next video take care and bye bye